Alright, it's been a while, but welcome back to Spy Fox and Hold the Mustard. So, at this point, I thought we were at the end of the game. Turns out we still have to go to North America. So, but given the cutscene, it sounded like that maybe was the halfway point of the game? Or maybe this is like the last one. I have no idea. This is the thing with blind let's plays. You never quite know. But having said that, I'm about to find out. So let's continue. Yes, that is A. It is already. Fox, you've arrived on the Yucatan Peninsula in Central America. There seems to be another transmitter robot here, like the one you put out of commission in Cairo. It's controlling more tomato-snatching robots. Looks like I'll be doing a little sightseeing then, Monkey Penny. <laughs> no, it just took Spy Fox a month and a half to reach the Yucatan Peninsula. I was also, I definitely have forgotten how to play, so uh, if I screw up a bunch, that's going to be why. Wait, this doesn't look like the United States. Uh, Spy Fox, we said it was Central America, which means like, you know, probably the border between North America and South America, so not the United States. Nonsense! Everything in the American continent is, uh, Amer is the United States, Monkey Penny. Spy Fox, did you pass geography class? <laughs> Irrelevant. <laughs> I also was looking at the wrong spot on the map. I thought I was the green uh, checkpoint. Like, why does it say that the enemies aren't around? There definitely should be. Again, I have no idea how King Conglomerate is affording all of this uh, spaceships and stuff. I guess the Ketchup Empire pays big. <laughs> Spy Fox, King Conglomerate is like launching his forces over towards the Yucatan Peninsula. You've got to get over there ASAP. Sorry, Monkey Penny, but I put in that I was going on vacation during this time. Spy Fox, the, the ketchup industry depends on you. Sorry, but vacation is vacation. <laughs> Yay, we got it. caught one tomato. Thank goodness. Boop, boop, boop. Ouch! <laughs> Spy Fox, did you just crash headlong into... The, you know, it, I, it's been a month and a half since I've flown in the spy mess, so... Forgive me if my flying skills are a bit of a mess at the moment. <laughs> I want to point out you could have assigned a different spy to complete the mission while I was gone, but you insisted on waiting till my vacation was up. <laughs> That's true, Monkey Penny. <laughs> we do have other agents. <laughs> Could have gotten Mata Harry. She's not doing anything. There's a lot of enemies on these levels, though. I might have hit the checkpoint a little too soon. Oh, wait. Is this something that I have to destroy? Wait, hang on. Is there like a, a mothership somewhere that I'm missing? I'll need some fuel. Well, I'm kind of out because there's only one checkpoint. The levels are gonna get a little bit harder, which means I might actually have to implement strategy. Okay, I think these are the last two enemies. Okay! Yep, it's just longer levels in general. Remaining tomatoes, how many do we get? Who cares? I got 66,000. <laughs> I still don't know what all these power-ups do. I think that's an extra life, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely having to use the, the radar. I was kind of thinking while I was on hiatus where I rank Hold the Mustard compared to the other junior arcade games. I do think... I am I think it's one of the weaker ones, but I'm kind of torn whether I like this or Cheese Chase more. I actually don't know which one I prefer. I think I would prefer Hold the Mustard for the plot line alone. King Kong Glomerate's a way better character than just Russian Blue Stealing Cheeses. 
I also think the levels in this are a lot less frustrating than cheese chases. Okay, I think that settles it then. I like this more than cheese chase. I also like it more than water worries, but that should go without saying. If I reach a million subscribers on YouTube, I will play Water Worries. <laughs> but only if I reach a million. <laughs> the problem with Water Worries is it's it's just it is the most boring junior arcade game. Just like, hey, how would you like 100 levels of Loofer shooting a slingshot at bubbles? And that's literally it? It's like, um, no. Well, too bad. That's what the game is. <laughs> I'm not, Eddie. That's, that's, uh, that's the point. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention. Congratulations. Congratulations on hitting 1,000 subscribers I'll on YouTube. Some fuel. That's, that's a big milestone. Go full fuel. How wonderful. The junior arcade games, they're a bit they're a bit of a mixed bag. I adore Maze Madness, it's easily the best. I also really like Dog on a Stick. I think that Balloonorama and Sockworks are fun until you get too deep into them. And then like Pajama Sam, Lost and Found, Cheese Chase Hold the Mustard are like, eh. And then there's water worries. Maybe when I'm finished with all of them, I should make a Humongous Entertainment Games tier list. I would just have to lump all of the different versions of the Backyard Sports games into one, because I'm not ranking Backyard Baseball in like the 11 different versions it has as separate games. <laughs> One thing I will say about all of the junior arcade games, they did have bopping music. Okay, I... <laughs> the homing missiles actually threw me off a little bit. Eat my homing missiles! It would be kind of interesting to see what the community thinks of certain Humongous Entertainment games versus me, because from what I understand, a lot of people consider, like, Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise to be like, eh, it's, it's fine, it's not great, and I'm like, that is one of my favorite games. <laughs> so, uh, nostalgia might cloud my judgment for some of them, obviously. So, I'd say, on the whole, Humongous Entertainment makes made really great edutainment games. The problem is, I haven't played every Humongous Entertainment game. Like, I never... I never played the Big Fingers games beyond the demo for the Kindergarten one. I never played Moonbase Commander. I didn't even know it existed until long after Humongous Entertainment went out of business. I haven't played Backyard Football. I haven't played all the Blue's Clues games. I've played, I think... I guess it depends on how many there are. I've played four of the Blue's Clues games. Because there's like, there's the Blue's Birthday Adventure. There are two discs, but it's one game. There's the Blue ABC Time Activities, the Blue 1, 2, 3, 8 Time Activities. There's like the Blue's Clues Treasure Hunt game. I think there might be others as well. If there are, I have not played any of the others. I'll need some fuel. Oh, all right. <laughs> Thanks for telling me that, Spot Fox. We can stop by the Bucky's and get some gas. <laughs> can I get some of the praline while I'm there? Spy Fox, you're in the middle of a, a top secret mission. I mean, I'm flying around Central America and blasting spaceships. I'm pretty sure people are gonna notice. I don't think so, Spy Fox. They're all playing that new Lethal Company game. Of course. <laughs> No one will even look outside their windows.
Also, in case anyone is wondering, yes, Marty and I will eventually play Pajama Sam 4 and Buzzy Explores the Jungle. <laughs> Not right now, but eventually. I've heard Moonbase Commander is, like, re extremely different from every other humongous entertainment game, but, like, it's... Yeah, it's, it, I think it's an RTS game, right? Real-time strategy. Level complete! Oh, turn-based! Okay. That's, that's a little easier to play. <laughs> and I'll be honest, the only real-time strategy game I've played that I've actually enjoyed has been the Pikmin series. Pikmin is a good in series. It's also very different from most real-time strategy games, because it's not like, hey, you're building tanks. <laughs> hey, it's Clash of Clans. <laughs> it's like mixed with exploration. Get back here with those tomatoes. This game... Uh, Humongous Entertainment in general really knew that you can take a mediocre game and turn it into a great game just by having a boppin' soundtrack. Like, I, I love Puppa Joins the Parade. Without a soundtrack, that game would not be very good. <laughs> oh no, they're flying off with the tomatoes. Don't let him get away. Aha! Sniped! Yeah, I still have to play Pikmin 4. I put it on my Christmas list, did not get it, but I did get Mario Wonder, which was a fantastic game. In fact, I can't remember how I mentioned it or not, but I strongly believe Mario Wonder is the best 2D Mario game. Period. So if you have not played it, because you're like, ah, it's another 2D Mario, like, no, no, no. It's really good. <laughs> Pikmin 4 is on my list. A Putt Putt Saves the Zoo would have been the best Putt Putt game if it had branching paths. Even with the just the one path, I'd still say it's one of the top games. But I do I do like Putt Putt Enters the Race more. I also think I'm the one person in the world who actually liked doing the farming game in Putt Putt Enters the Race. <laughs> the one that you can't skip through. <laughs> I gotta say, I think the Spy Fox games and the Pajama Sam games. If you ignore Pajama Sam 4, Pajama Sam is the most consistently amazing series. Because all three of the Junior Adventures were amazing. And same with Spy Fox. Whereas, like, Puppet, you had... Puppet Joins the Circus, which was not great. Freddy Fish, you had, like, Freddy Fish 2 and 5, which were, like, okay. But, like, the three main Pajama Sam games were all fantastic. I don't think so. Yeah! Level complete! Oh boy, we got a thousand for that. It's my lucky day. Alright, well... So now the levels are just getting really long. Oh, I see that. We're invincible. You know, I probably should save the power-ups for later on in the level where there are more enemies. <laughs> but nah. I just like bum-rushing stuff. That's the thing about holding the mustard. It does feel like pretty much all the levels are just the same. Most junior arcade games, at least... Ow. Ouch! Spy Fox are not invincible anymore. Sorry. 
<laughs> but a lot of this just seems like you're fighting the same ships in the same environment, just of a slightly different color. With like, there's no new gimmicks really that pop out. It's not like, oh hey, there are new spaceships that are like have new moves, or oh hey, your your super spy mess gets new abilities. It's just like you move the same way, you shoot the same stuff. It's a little bit like Balloonorama in that regard, but at least Balloonorama had like, oh, new types of balloons in the worlds. Balloonorama just went on for like 70 levels too long. <laughs> Balloonorama was 120 levels when it probably should have been only 50. <laughs> Sometimes less is more. Or heck, even 60 levels. If you had just cut the length of each world in half for that game, that would, I think, would be a better product. I do like the, the Sween remix of the Spy Fox 1 credits music. That's really good. Carrot was a great reoccurring character. I'll need some fuel. Alright, alright. Off to the Costco parking lot. I feel like the hardest part of this game has been the tutorial levels. Just because I didn't know how to play. <laughs> but hey, that's okay. You don't need to make the game hard. Just... I wish they kept it a little interesting. Because if it were for me being able to talk about random stuff during these streams, this would be very boring. <laughs> Okay, but seriously, how much money is King Conglomerate making on his mustard products that he can afford this many spaceships? And if he has enough to afford these spaceships, does he really need more to, by putting the, the tomato or ketchup factories out of business? I don't think so. We're only on level six of the peninsula. Uh, Spy Fox, try not to hit any innocent civilians. Can I hit guilty civilians? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Boop -boo. Blast off. Boom 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 boom. <laughs> maybe he owns other businesses. Uh, I mean, maybe. He is keen calm glomerate, so, like... Sounds like he's a pretty high-up guy in the business world. Maybe he's the CEO of Yucko. You know, the company that makes lard on a stick from Spy Fox 2? That would be a nice tie-in. You know what? I'm saying, yeah, I think he owns Yucko. Quack, I can't quite reach. There we go. Boom. Yellow power up gives us homing missiles. Up goes the weasel. Feels like this homing missile's lasting longer than the. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Like, I just, I'm saying, feels like the profit you're going to make if you succeed with this is not going to outweigh the cost of having to build this spaceship fleet. <sighs> Every time you blast the last one, it's like, oh, psych, we had more. Bam, 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 bam. 
Oh, again. Darn it. It's the level that never ends. Spy Fox, you may have prematurely used your fuel recharge. How was I supposed to know there were going to be 800 more spaceships that spawned? It's a good thing he didn't put any weapons on any of his spaceships. Seems honestly like a little bit of an oversight. Okay, surely this is going to be the last one, right? I'll need some fuel. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Just run into him. <laughs> you got this, Spy Fox. <laughs> Remember, when you're on the road, you're invincible. <laughs> That's not what I learned in Spy Driver's Ed. <laughs> Ooh, sharp shot. <laughs> Level complete. I'm gonna need the fuel, Quack. <laughs> Alright, let me just install the Spy Gasoline Transmitter. I could use another cutscene. Ouch. Like, I'm just saying. The game where you fly a spy mobile around and blast spaceships is less fun than a game where you just eat bugs as an anteater. From Buzzy in the Jungle. And by the way, the anteater feeder is a goaded game. Oh, also, while I was on hiatus, I had an idea, and I know there aren't a lot of people in chat, but one of my ideas was find completely random s games and speedrun categories for them that exist but don't have any runs submitted, and just make a run, submit it, and get world record by default. Just see how many of those I can do. <laughs> I almost did one of those for April Fools, but I'm like, no, you know what? Probably not. Probably because my capture card is on the fritz, so I think I need to invest in a new one before I stream any consoles again. I was going to stream Donkey Konga. Which is the Donkey Kong themed rhythm game where you play the GameCube cool. Bongo controller, which is clearly one of the greatest controllers ever made. No, stop spawning new stuff. No, stop spawning new stuff. <laughs> I agree. The DK Bongo is such a good controller. It's left Bongo, right Bongo, start and clap. That's, that's all you need. All you need to play any game. Yucatan Peninsula level 8. Oh, it's the mothership level, though. So perhaps for this one, we can ignore the enemies and just blow up the antenna. It appears that with the transmitter gone, that the robots are out of control. I'm getting reports of them harassing cruise ships in the Caribbean. Uh-oh, I better get there quick. Cool, there we go. That was easy. <laughs> was that it for the Yucatan Peninsula? Yes, it was. Cool. We're on the Caribbean Sea, but I think, th you know, that's a perfect spot to stop the stream because we're just at the hour and a half mark. <laughs> well, that was a fast level indeed. Thanks for watching, everybody. So it looks like we're going to the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, on Friday after Backyard Baseball. So tune in for that if you want. And then we'll be playing Recoded on Sunday and continuing regular streams on Monday. It's great to be back. 
glad you, I'm thank you guys for your patience and waiting. I know it's been a while, but we're coming back full force stronger than ever, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. So yeah, great chatting with you all. I wish you all a fantastic rest of your night, and God bless everybody. Bye.